was can we beat the Colombians and the Belgians and the Argentinas of the world? Are you kidding me? We can't beat Trinidad on a field that's too wet and too heavy? <laughs> what are we doing? This what are we doing? This is the discussion that's being had. That was former USA striker Taylor Twelman speaking on ESPN Sports Center after the game last night. And he couldn't have said it any better. Hello and welcome to sports. I'm Josh LaSelva. The last time the United States failed to reach the World Cup was in 1986, which was the year Jack Nicholas won the Masters at age 46, the year that Michael Jordan started to dominate the NBA, and the year Bo Jackson became a baseball player. Let's take a look at how we got to this point. The United States on the road playing at Trinidad and Tobago. And here we go, the 16th minute, across into the box. Well, let the horror story begin right there. Not even sure how the ball found the back of the net. It was ruled an own goal by way of defender Omar Gonzalez. Make it 1-0 in the first half. Later in the half from more than a mile away. A stunner. Absolute masterclass goal. Alvin Jones takes a crack from the moon and strikes it home. Now the United States has to overcome a 2-0 deficit and at least draw to advance to the World Cup. The second half starts off, though, brilliantly for the United States. The 19-year-old wonder boy Christian Pulisic gets the ball top of the box, scoring. Love it. It happened so early for the United States that, you know, maybe they could pull it back another goal and, and equalize. But as the game continued to play out, it just wasn't the case. It wasn't the United States night. The best chance to equalize came late, and the chance went begging. Trinidad sinks the United States 2-1. to one. The Florida football team still control their own destiny in the SEC, shockingly, but they have a long road ahead of them this upcoming weekend. Texas A&M rolls into town. They've put up some impressive offensive numbers, in large part for the Aggies' success is their star quarterback, Kellen Mon, a freshman stud, who has played in tight games and uses his mobility to his advantage. Here's defensive line coach for Florida Coach Rumpf on the challenge that presents the Gator team. Start seeing this guy scrambling and getting out, and sometimes you want to come off and get off your man, but he's capable of just dumping across your head and, and just hitting a receiver. So we got to be disciplined in our rush lanes, and we got to be disciplined in our coverage. And you know, basically, you hear the cliche, you hear it all the time. You know, do your job, but this week, and we got to do our job as well. The Gator defense has been ruthless over the years, especially in the turnover margin. But this year, they are still searching for their first fumble recovery, and they've not even been able to cause a turnover in three weeks. Injuries seem to be the other story coming into this game this weekend. Take a look at all the names who are listed as questionable or simply will not play against Texas A&M. There are some serious playmakers on this list and hopefully we can get an update on the questionable players during Coach McElwain's press conference which is taking place right now. It would hurt the Florida offense pretty significantly if Kadarius Tony is not able to play. 32 people will gather in New York next week to decide the fate of kneeling in the NFL. The annual fall meetings between NFL owners will be closely monitored to say the least. In a memo sent to all owners in the NFL, Commissioner Roger Goodell made it very clear that he wants players to stand during the playing of the national anthem. President Donald Trump reacted to the news this morning with this tweet, stating that it's about time that these players stand for the anthem. This story won't be going away anytime soon, and next week will prove to be an important moment that will determine the direction this issue will go. Florida baseball opens fall practice today, and there are Plenty of new faces taking the field. Head coach Kevin O'Sullivan will use the fall, fall season to mold the young players and to keep building the returners. Another story is the announcement of the new proposal of a new baseball facility. And Sully says, though, it's not his job to worry about it at this time. Are you able to address the facility stuff that came out a couple days ago? No, I'm really, that's not my concern right now. I, I, I know there's some things like that, you know, that they're looking at, and there's some obviously some different options here, but. You know, I'll let, I'll let um, you know, Scott and everybody else involved handle that. I After winning the program's first national championship last season, Sully wants to focus on preparing the team for the future in hopes of returning to Omaha instead of thinking about a new facility. Star player for Orlando City, Ricardo Kaká, announced that this afternoon he will not be seeking to return to Orlando City. His contract will come up and be finished with the club. At age 35, Kaká will play his last game in Orlando City as a Lion on Sunday against Columbus Crew in front of the home crowd that has supported him since his arrival three years ago. Here's Kaká's announcement from earlier today. And my decision, my final decision, is not to, to renew my contract with this, this club. So unfortunately, guys, Coach McElwain has not yet reached his press conference. He's a little behind, so no update on those injured players. But as you saw last week, those injured players do mean a lot to this team. Yeah, I saw a lot of players get injured last in last game.